What's up guys, Infernape here. I'm sorry if <laughs> I sound a bit rough around the edges. I'm actually suffering from tonsillitis. Yay. But I had to get a video out and I'm very committed to this channel, so I'm going to work my way through it. Anyways, welcome back to another installment of where I rank all of David's, also known as Dr. Amnesia's, Nuzlocke teams. Last time I did his Pokemon Platinum team. And this time, I'm doing his Black and White 2 team. Apparently, he says that this, so far this is probably the hardest Nuzlocke he's ever done. So I'm interested to see what his team's like. For those who didn't see the last um, ranking, what I do is I look over his uh, Pokemon team, their moves, and I also judge them from 1 to 10 on how useful they are in the playthrough and moveset. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. If you think I misranked any of the uh, Pokemon team members, which team member was your favourite? And if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, for David's first team member, we've got a Flygon called Drago, which is level 55 and has the moves Fly, Flamethrower, Dragon Core and Earth Power. Three out of four, that's... Well, moves-wise, anyway. They're probably the best. Probably wouldn't have taught Flycon Fly, personally. But I'm assuming that this is probably the only option he had for a flyer. So, hey-ho. Dragon Claw and Earthquake are... Uh, earthquake? Bleh, it's Earth Power, sorry. Dragon Claw and Earth Power? Thank you. Definitely are the best stand moves it can get, because it can't get Earthquake by level-up, and you can't get it, it by TM until post-game. So, Earth Power is definitely the best choice. Flamethrower is definitely really good for coverage against Ice types. I personally would have swapped Fly with something else. Possibly something like Steel Wing or Rock Slide. But other than that, pretty decent. Probably one of the best Pokemon to have in this game. Like, literally, if... Oh, wait, I haven't actually uploaded that video yet. Let's just say... It's probably one of the uh, Pokemon I would put in a best team. It's really, really good and super powerful. Plus, it's com on boat typing. Definitely very helpful. So, I would probably give this sucker... I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Because if it swapped Fly with something else, definitely would be a 10 out of 10. Alright, the second member I'm reacting to is a superior called Chespin. How original. Okay, we've got the moves Frenzy Plant, Dragon Pulse, Giga Drain, and Toxic. Uh... I've got so many issues. First things first. Superior is the worst starter in the game. I know that his, uh, basically, the way he picked his starters is that basically, wait, he does popular vote from his friends, but at the same time, I just wouldn't do that. Like, I just wouldn't do that for a Nuzlocke. Like, you should have free range to pick your own starter. Plus, doesn't exactly have that move set. Isn't exactly the best in the world. I mean, if you want a somewhat usable moveset for a superior, this kind of works, I guess. I mean, Toxic would be good to have in case, you know, you want a Toxic kill or anything. But... Still doesn't help the fact that superior is the worst starter of this game. Definitely not the worst starter of all. That one belongs to Meganium. But still... This is a very close second to being one of the worst starters I've ever, ever created. The fact that this superior only works in two important battles and against one important trainer's Pokemon, that being Getsu Seismatoad, I'm going to have to give it a fairly low score because this is just not a usable Pokemon in too many places. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to give this sucker about... A 3 out of 10, and I am feeling, and I feel like that's even generous, because due to the fact that it's running a Dragon Pulse to cover against Dragon types, but 
You don't need two grass type moves. Just one is fine. But to be honest with you, I feel like giving it a three is generous. Okay, the uh, next Pokemon I'm going to be reacting to is his Heracross called Stag. And its moves are Brick Break, Aerial Ace, Close Combat, and Mega Horn. Where do I start? Okay. Three stab moves. Really? Really, David? Uh, I would not have taught it three stab moves. It's just not viable. I mean, I feel like what he's trying to do is have Brick Break, but have close combat and reserve in case Brick Break isn't powerful enough to take the opponent out. But why? Just why? As for Aerial Ace, there are better coverage moves in the world. Why Aerial Ace? You could have taught it a stat, um, a coverage move to cover a type that it's weak against. But instead, you went with Aerial Ace, just so you can get a guaranteed hit. <sighs> Don't get me wrong though, fighting types are definitely useful in this game. Take Scrafty or Lucario for example. But I don't see many viable or places for Heracross, but by the time you get Heracross, the only place it's going to really shine is Grimsley in the Elite Four. So, bearing that in mind, I'm probably going to give this... I'll give it a 4 out of 10. Like, you just don't need three stab moves. Just go with Brick Break and Mega Horn, then teach... The other two moves, coverage moves, such as Night Slash, for example, to cover against Psychic types. You don't need three stab moves plus Aerial Ace. So, four out of ten is what it's going to get. Okay, the next one I'm going to be reacting to is a Starmie called H2O. How original. Okay, we've got the moves Surf, Ice Beam, Psychic, and Thunderbolt. Probably the most classic moveset for a Starmie. But, why? Why? I can see what he, uh, David was trying to go for. Like, this is probably the most classic moveset for a Starmie. But, it doesn't mean it's that useful in this game. Like, this game, like, you get Staryu very, very late. And just like with the last Pokemon, when you get it that late in the game, it's not going to shine in too many places. Like, I could probably see it use its fall against the Dragon Gym. And possibly maybe a, like, Iris, I guess. But, I don't know. I personally would have gone with Samurott. Mainly because it's the best starter in the game, and is more powerful. For Starmie's rating, I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. Mainly because it's definitely a lot more useful than, than Heracross. But, like I said, it comes very late in the game, so it's not going to shine in too many places. I will give him credit for the moveset, though. The moveset is really good. But, not the best in the world. Like, I personally would have just gone with Samurott. So much better. Okay, the fifth Pokemon is a Weavile called Shadow. And its moveset is Ice Punch, X Scissor, Dig, and Night Slash. Ugh. I will give him credit for using a Dark type. Dark types are definitely really good in this game. However, using Weavile certainly is not. Here's my issue. You don't get Sneasel literally near the end of the game. And you don't get to evolve it also literally near the end of the game. So, what's the point? Like, don't get me wrong, its stab moves are really, really good. Ice Punch and Night Slash, top rate. Dig, I'm assuming, is coverage for fire types. 
But X is her? Did you run out of moves? Like, was it coverage against other dark types? Why? Due to the fact that this starter can't be found and also evolved literally near the end of the game, the fact that it can't shine in too many places, like, it can literally only be good against two of the Elite Four members and the champion. That is literally it from when you find it. I'm gonna have to give this a 4 out of 10 again. Like, it's just not the best dark type to use. It's found very late, evolves very late, and it can't shine in too many places. So, I feel like a 4 out of 10 is fitting. Okay, his final Pokemon is a Baymax. Oh, it's only the best Pokemon to use in every single game! And he named it Master, probably because he caught it in a bloody Master Ball! Perfect logic, David. Perfect logic. And it's got the moves Shadow Claw, Shadow Ball, Toxic, and Psychic. Probably because it doesn't learn that many moves! If you want a Baymet to be somewhat useful, this is the sort of direction you probably want to go. I mean... Eh... I mean, I probably would have swapped Toxic with, for maybe Will-O-Wisp. Just because... Well, Bayonet is fragile as... Can't say the word. But... Yeah. I just think Will-O-Wisp would have been much better because any physical move that adds... Will just be cut in half, thanks to Will-O-Wisp. But... Two ghost type moves? Really? You just need one. Just just one. That's all you need. Psychic. I'm assuming he just ran out of moves. This is probably gonna be the lowest score, I'm sorry. This bayonet can only be found literally at Victory Road. It's only good against two Elite Four members, and that's literally it. So like I said, this is going to be the lowest score on here. And I know David's going to kill me for this. But I'm going to have to give it a 1 out of 10. Because ghost types aren't good in this playthrough. You caught a ghost type. And not to mention the worst ghost type option possible, might I add. I'm sorry, but 1 out of 10 is probably the most I'm going to ha have to give it. It's just not good in a playthrough of this game. Okay, now we're done with all of the rankings. Flygon was 9 out of 10, Superior was 3 out of 10, Heracross was 4 out of 10, Starmie was 5 out of 10, Weavile was 4 out of 10, and Bayonet was 1 out of 10. So after that, the average score of this team is a 4.3 out of 10 in my own opinion. I'm honestly surprised he managed to complete this playthrough. Like, it, I just find it a miracle. Honestly, I do. And there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video as much as I did making it. If you think I made the right call on this uh, team. If you think I misranked any of the team members or the overall average score. And if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Did you enjoy the video as much as I did making it? If you did, be sure to get a massive thumbs up. Comment down below. Share this video with a friend. And if you're new, subscribe to my channel. It's been Inferno today. Okay, that's all from me, so until the next time, this is Infernape, signing off. Bye!